So this is Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by, let's just be honest, the champions of the weekend. That's Both it. from the Peacock Gym, Ellis Zorro, the new prize fighter, cruiserweight, not prize fighter, shit, Ben Shalom won't be happy. <laughs> the boxer, cruiserweight <laughs> tournament champion. Yeah. And the new and two-time British middleweight champion, Denzel Bentley. Guys, you must be on top of the world. Come on, Denzel. Yeah, we definitely are. We definitely are. Feel good. I feel good. I know Ellis feels good. We're both happy. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's so what we worked hard for. Um, obviously, for Denzel to regain that title for the second time. And for me, you know, to get this uh, 40 grand and, um, yeah, show my skills <laughs> on, 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 a, on, a big, on a big platform on Sky Sports. So, yeah, it's all, all smiles around. And one of you did a hard-looking 12 rounds. One of you did quite a comparatively easy-looking nine rounds. And I don't mean to disrespect any of your opponents, Ellis, in yeah. the tournament. But as I was saying to you off-camera, you never seem to be in any danger of losing any of those three fights. Yeah, I think it's a combination of two things. I felt like going into the competition, I knew that I had more skill than anybody there. Um, I still feel like I've got a lot more skill than a lot of the cruiserweights in my division. There's only a few that I feel that like skill for skill for, could challenge me. And um, then just how the rounds was going, like I just felt in complete control. Um, I didn't feel, you know, phased by anything. I didn't see anything that my opponents could do to, to phase me. And um, so, yeah, that's probably why I look so comfortable in there. And Denzel, you started quite slow in the fight and then took over in the second half. What was Martin saying to you in the corner? Because he was telling Ellis that he'd lost rounds that he hadn't lost, just to G him up a bit. Uh uh, I, I, can't, I can't remember everything. It's just little things like um, there were some rounds I came out, I came out in the later rounds, I came out slow and then I picked up the pace later. He'd be like, switch it now, come out faster and then you could take a round up in the middle and then go again and finish strong. Telling me to that, always, always finish strong at the end of the round. Um, put something behind my jab. Like just and a few more like, just don't let this slip because you're letting them back in the fight here. Don't let this slip. Or like, I'll, have a, I'll, have a, I'll have a lazy round and he'd be like, look, um, don't let it slip man. don't let him back in the fight like you're up so just don't let, don't let him back I'll be like alright cool I got you let's go I can't remember exactly what it was it was told, uh, uh, yeah I can't remember everything and when you scored what should have been called a knockdown and his knee touched the floor it was obvious to everyone watching at home but it seemed to be on the referee's blind side how did you feel when it wasn't called were you worried about the scores at the time I wasn't really worried because I thought I was up anyway so I, I or I thought I was taking over at that point. I mm. thought like, yeah, this, I felt like this is my fight now. So I wasn't really worried about um, it not being called a knockdown. I didn't even think about it. I just felt like when it got to that, by the time I got to the end of the fight, I thought I was, I thought I was the clear winner. Regardless of the knockdown, I thought like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm listen, we're home now. Like, I've, I've, I've won because I think from that round, I won every round from there on. Maybe the tenth might have been a bit questionable, but I won every round from there on. And Ellis. This was the day before your tournament appearance, obviously Denzel's fight. Were you still glued to the TV watching it? Or yeah, me and, my, me and my cousins and my friends. I was over in Manchester in the hotel. We was all gathered around the TV. Um, and yeah, I just used it as motivation, to be honest. Like, to be honest with you, I think whatever Lucky you happened, didn't lose then, didn't it? Yeah, no, but no, to be honest, whatever happened, I would have used it as motivation. Um, but as the fight went on, it just got more and more, you know, should I say, obvious that Denzel was going to win or, or get rid of Linus. But... Yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm happy for him. I'm really happy for him, to be honest. And Denzel, you're in a somewhat easy position of having already banked your second British title. And uh, mm. the next night, you got to watch Ellis Canada to victory in the boxer tournament. What, what were you thinking while you were watching your stable mate perform so well? I was just hoping that he, he just, he just done what he done so I can just brag all weekend. Like, I was waiting for him to finish, to, I waited for him to finish fighting or win the competition so I could tweak Steve Goodwin and send him a pair of middle fingers. Because you made some shitty predictions that yeah, he the day made before. Some, he talking made about, some out of uh, comments. I, like, I can't, yeah. Like, uh, it's talking about me and my fight. Or, um, I can't fight in back foot. I get, uh, I get, I, I got lost whatever when I fought in back foot. And he started talking about LS8 foot, no one that's going to hit him back. And when he does, he's going to be in trouble. And I was just waiting for this weekend to pass so I can tweet him and just send him little middle finger emojis. Like, hey, Steve, <laughs> take that. But, I just, yeah. but then obviously by the time it came, I was like, you know what? I'm calm now. They need to entertain him, but that's what, exactly what I thought I did. And he done it. I was just happy after him that he done it. Then, then Steve being proven wrong, if that makes sense. So I was just happy that he won it. And then we, we met up today in the gym, and we were just we were just both gas like, hey, listen, we, we put the gym back on top. We're on top. 
We're both in great positions. Let's just let's just kind of put it like the fifth. Yeah, I said to Martin, I saw him last week at a press conference, and I said, you're on a bit of a bad run of luck because Chris Bork obviously lost for the British title. Louis Lynn's got his shoulder injury, which is pretty stubborn by the sounds of it. And then this happens. It just turns everything back the way it was before. Were you guys aware in the build-up to this weekend how important it could be for the gym as a whole that you could both get massive victories for the gym at the same time? Yeah, I think for me, personally, I came to the gym I think maybe a month after Daniel Dubois lost. So mm. since I've been there, it's like, like I wasn't there when Denzel beat Do you know what I mean? I was, yeah. It's like people, it's like people calling me the Mister Bad Luck. You know, I wasn't there when Denzel won the British Cup for the first time. I come when uh, Daniel lost. Then um, obviously Chris lost for the British. So it was just like, yeah, like we needed a. We've been on a bit of a bad run. And we needed it. And I'm, I'm kind of happy, although it's a selfish sport, like I'm, I'm kind of happy for Martin and Ray as well, you know. Um, so, yeah, we're in a good place, man, and upwards and onwards from here. What about you, Denzel? Were you aware of just the bigger picture? Obviously, winning yeah. the British title for a second time is big for you anyway. But the whole idea of the gym kind of conquering that weekend. Yeah, no, so definitely. Because you know me already, like, you see the way I tweet, the way I speak. I, I'm, I, I'm all for the, I'm, I'm all for the gym. I'm all for the gym. Like, I love bigging up the gym. I love everyone in the gym. My brother, if, um, if there's female fighters, sister, do you know what I'm saying? So it's one of them ones where I, I, I wanted the gym to be on a high, but Martin always tells us, be selfish. This is your moment. Think about yourself. So I've, I had to think about myself first and what it meant for me. And then after that, I kind of realised, yeah, this is the big thing for the gym after both days. Do, do you allow female fighters in your gym these days? I haven't seen one for a while. Yeah, we've got Sasha, but she's still an amateur. Sasha Hickey, she just won the senior ABAs. Her first senior year, she just won the ABAs. Sick fighter. She, she, yeah, she listen, comes down. She's a good fighter, but yeah. Uh, well, well, we'll take more notice of her as she goes into the pros as well. Now you've shouted mm -hmm. her out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fools now turn to the future, and we'll start with you, Ellis. Obviously, you were the most experienced um, cruiserweight going into the tournament. You've now won that. You, we, we've heard what you're going to do with the money, which I think is laudable. Great for your daughter as well. Yeah. What's the future in terms of fighting, though? Are we going to see you in for the English or the British anytime soon? Yeah, I mean, ideally, I wanted to do the traditional route and do Southern Area, English and British, but like, I'm 14 and 0 now with six knockouts. I think I've kind of surpassed the Southern Area level. Um, and at the moment, it's in a small hall promoter's hands, which just could be difficult to get hold of. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'd like to fight for the English, but I would go straight for the British as well. I, I do believe Mikel Luau and Dion Juma have been mandated uh, by the board to fight each other. So, you know, I don't mind having a fight in between or just waiting for them. Um, and they're both with Boxer I'd, as well. Say again? They're both with Boxer as well, I don't aren't know they? If, I don't know if Luau is. I know he fought on the show, obviously, because he was... Richard yeah, Luau and Juma both are. Sorry, I mean, I know Luau is, but I didn't know Juma was. Um, yeah, no, neither did I. I did an interview with Gary Logan. He had to tell me that he was with him. So I was like, oh, oh you're going in against the Boxer them. fighter. And he was like, no, no. He's a boxer well, fighter. No, that's a, and that, that's kind of why I wanted to sign with Sky and Boxer because, um, you know, they've got some of the best cruiserweights in the country there, again, with Richard as well and Lowell. And now I'm in the mix. You know, I'd like to fight all these guys. I want to be in 10-rounders and 12-rounders, 50-50 fights or even fights where I'm not the favourite or where I'm not the most experienced and all of that. Um, and I think that's when you'll see the best of me. So, yeah. Denzel, you're no stranger to 12-rounders these days. Obviously, earlier in your career, you were just banging everyone out in the first few rounds. But you've got some... Rounds under your belt since then. <laughs> where, where do you go from here? Presumably, having won the British title for a second time, while it's a great honour, you don't want to hang around at that level for too long. Yeah, no, definitely. There's some young, hungry lions coming through. Like, my opportunity to let them have a for me. Let them, let them fight for the British and let them chase their dreams and achieve what they set. So, um, hopefully, European next. Hopefully, European. We'll see, we'll see what we can do. But that'll be a nice step for me. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to try and push for that. But... Like I said, it's all a matter of conversation. We ain't really had no real discussions. This is just things that I, I thought about myself. So have a conversation, you know, management, Frank and stuff. See see what's there, what's available, what's the best option. And obviously what I'd want as well, what, we think, what they can do for me and, and all those things. But I, I think the European is a good step. While I've got you both on together, it'd be remiss of me not to ask you some questions about each other. So we'll keep it pretty brief. But Ellis, thinking about Denzel, what's your favourite and least favourite quality about him? See Denzel, he 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 fully supports he fully supports everyone, and he's fully happy for me and everybody else as if he's himself. Um, 
So he's very raw in that sense. Um, what I don't like about him is that he always seems to have energy and he always seems to be, it's like he's like got a bit of ADHD, you know, that like we train in the morning. Sometimes I come to training and, you know, you just want to be left alone a little bit, but then just always there with the dumb joke, just like, <laughs> like punching you or just like pinching you or some stupid childish rubbish. So yeah, that's probably the thing I don't like about him the most. <laughs> Denzel, get your revenge. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Um, yeah, the most thing I like about Ellis is it's the same minute. He, he supports us. He's, he's a good asset to the team. No, he man, don't fight come as well. Like, pick your own thing, man. Pick your own word, bro. Hey, cut, man, cut, man. I don't even, I don't even know you like that. I just met you yesterday. But like, yeah, he's cool. Like, obviously, he, he can fight as well. Like, I know he's heavy, but where I'm lighter, when when we are sparring each other, we can work on like, like technical stuff or like, or like just work on our speed and our reactions and things. He doesn't really have to use his his weight advantage. You know, to to have a spar with me because he know he, he's that good. He knows how to just use his brain and just use his speed and his and and his technical ability. So then we we always have good spars regardless of the weight difference. Um, the least favorite thing I like I don't like about him is it's not really something I don't like about him. It's just that I just find funny stuff. So at the least, when he first started, he couldn't handle my banter, so he 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 always wanted to fight. So he. <laughs> Yeah, every, I, I every, every every second and every session, I'd get onto him, and and I and I'd never let it go. I'm saying, <laughs> I'd never let it go. I'm like, no, nah, good, and now and now he's with it, so he gets me a bit, and you know, we have a lot more fun. But at first, he just couldn't handle. It. He's like, bro, who's this guy? I think I am, and it was like more like a like, no, don't say, say that. And you got all more warning. You got all more warning. But I just always find fun. Is this true, Ellis? <laughs> yeah, no, he's right. He's right. Oh. I give him that. He's right. I was right. I could take I could take the jokes, but the repetition, I was just like, this guy, I'm gonna have to slap him, man. That's the only way I'm gonna shut this guy up. <laughs> and now you're best of friends, look. Yeah, that's look, it. happy ending. Happy that's ending. It, man. Oh, that's my guy. Well, guys, congratulations, of course, to both of you. Hopefully, it's the springboard to even greater success for you guys and for the gym as a whole. Really yeah. appreciate you sharing some of that um, joy and elation with the Seconds Out viewers. And I'm sure I'll be speaking to you both, maybe not together next time, but I'm sure I'll be yeah. speaking to you both very soon. Cheers, Dan. Take yeah. care. Take That's care, lads.